Is Spider-Man possible in real life? Let's find out. behind Spider-Man. Spider-Man is arguably one of the most famous fictional characters of all time. Doing whatever a spider can, Spider-Man helps fight crime in New York City with his powers. But could he exist in real life? Let's take a look at it. To determine if Spider-Man is possible, we have to look at where his powers came from. Spiders. More specifically, a radioactive spider. The question now is, can radioactivity alter the person's DNA like it did Peter Parker's? Yes, it can. A prime example of this is the Chernobyl disaster area in Ukraine. The animals in the radioactive area have often been found to have horrendous genetic mutations caused by radioactivity altering their DNA. Look at this poor little fella. <laughs> you. But Spider-Man looks pretty healthy to me. Why doesn't he have like five limbs and can't move? Well, the answer is that different types of radiation affect DNA differently. One type in specific ionizing radiation, takes DNA and edits the codons inside it, moving them around, mixing them up, and replacing them. Codons are these little lines of genetic code in your DNA that help create your genetic traits, like the number of fingers you have, the color of your eyes, or the size of your ears. The only assumption that we're going to make here is that the spider was kept in a very controlled environment, which does seem to be the case anyway. The reason for this assumption is that as far as scientists currently know, the only way to really get radiation to do what you want is to have it affect an organism in an environment with controlled gravity and temperature. So let's say this radioactive spider bit you. What might happen? Well, a few things might happen. You might get sick and live, you might get sick and die, you might die on the spot, you might have some freak genetic accident that leaves you with seven extra fingers. However, there's a small chance that codon transfer could happen. Because the ionizing radiation in the spider's body mixed up and mingled a lot of the spider's codons, there are some leftover ones in its body. So when the spider bites you, there's a very small but still possible chance that in that spider's saliva, blood, or venom, not only is radiation transferred to your body, but so are some freed codons. This is where some pretty amazing stuff might happen to you. We all know Spider-Man has a lot of cool powers. He can climb walls, he's got a spider sense that tingles, he's got super strength, speed, flexibility, and durability. In some variations, Spider-Man even produces web in his body that he can shoot from his wrists and swing from. Can we just take a second to talk about how uncomfortable that would feel, at least at first? Ugh, those webs just sliding out of your wrists? Thinking about it gives me shivers. Uncomfortable body webs aside, where did Spider-Man get all these powers? I mean, it's not like spiders have steel-like webbing or have a sixth sense telling them when danger is near, right? Well, the answer might surprise you. Spiders actually possess some kind of sixth sense, but it's nothing mental. Spiders have these little hairs on their bodies, called trichobothria hairs. Trichobothria hairs are sensitive, meaning they can actually feel vibrations in the air. This allows spiders to sense danger from an oncoming object or organism before it arrives, and can avoid it before it's too late. They have a different type of hair on their limbs as well, called setules. Setules are little, flexible, and needle-like. They can pierce into the surface the spider is climbing on in order to firmly stick to it. In the 2002 Spider-Man film, it's even shown that Peter Parker has setules. Coincidence? I think not! As for Spider-Man's flexibility, strength, durability, and speed, all of these are traits of different spiders, and while they might not all belong to one single spider, the spider that bit Peter Parker was genetically engineered, so it probably took some breeding to create it, meaning it quite possibly possesses traits from several types of spiders. Finally, the webbing. While there's been different variations of the webbing, ranging from organic body webs to mechanical websters designed by Peter Parker, we're going to assume here that the webbing comes from the body. So if he gets it from the spider, where does it come on his wrist and, well, not somewhere else? Well, this is possibly where the radiation did make a bit of a mess in Peter Parker's body. Spiders make spider webs with their webbing, and where that webbing comes out of helps them effectively do so. Even though it's now in Spider-Man's body, it's still meant to just make spider webs. However, if it's coming out of your wrists, you might not be able to make a web effectively. Your hands will get caught in making the intricate design and then you'll be trapped in your own web. However, the web is also abnormally strong. 
This is likely the result of either the breeding used to create the spider in question, or it's the result of radiation therapy. So, if it's so strong, why does the webbing disappear after an hour or so? Well, since the spider lived in a small case, too much webbing would mean little room for the spider to live in, so the web disintegrates to provide the spider with more room in its own habitat. This, combined with setuals, trichobothria hairs, and some good old spider elbow grease, is not only what gives Spider-Man his powers, but makes them 100% plausible to happen in real life. That's right everyone, Spider-Man really can do whatever a spider can, and so could anyone. Hope you guys enjoyed that first episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like. And also leave a comment as to what superhero you want me to look at next. Uh, I do have an episode planned for the Batsuit right now. But keep in mind, guys, that I am open to anything. I'm not just open to the origin of superhero. I'm open to how any aspect of a superhero is supposed to work and how it could work in real life. So leave a comment below to make sure to tell me what superhero you guys want to see next. Maybe Supervillain as well. And make sure to stay tuned for more episodes of Science Behind Superheroes. Thanks for watching, guys.